So my name is Amy Ho. I am clinical faculty over at uh, John Peter Smith in Texas and also on YPS board here. And this is a talk about a love affair with the multiple uses of lidocaine. So we start with a ode to lidocaine. Oh, lidocaine, oh, lidocaine, you take away all the pain. No pain, all gain, we're much more opioid sane. Multimodal analgesic now can reign, oh, lidocaine. So this is going to be a talk about some of the novel uses of lidocaine for abdominal pain, renal colic, headaches, and cough as we are in this opioid crisis and trying to find other ways to use other medicines. So we're going to go through some of the ways that we can use lidocaine, the contraindications, the indications, how to select it, and understand the risks and benefits of doing such. So like most things, we want to start with being safe. So let's talk about lidocaine toxicity just very briefly. So most of us remember that four to six milligrams per kilo of lidocaine is the toxic dose. There's a lot of case studies regarding this. But usually, they've concluded that 100 to 200 milligrams is safe. Um, the IV max is somewhere around, we think, 3 milligrams per kilo. And the subcutaneous max, we think, is around 4.5 mg per kilo. Um, some of the effects of lidocaine toxicity is lightheadedness, tremors, hallucinations, seizures, cardiac arrest. So have them on monitors if you're going to use lidocaine. And then also be sure that you're careful for people that have a seizure disorder. Additionally, also make sure anyone with hepatic disease you're a little bit careful on just because there's going to be decreased drug metabolism. Make sure you're always giving it intravenously, not arterially, because it is cardiac dose lidocaine. And then if you've uh, gone a little too far, just remember lipid emulsion. So we're moving into renal colic and abdominal pain. So another O to lidocaine. So lidocaine, glad you're in my brain. Ouch, those stones fill my patients with groans. Morphine barely cuts the pain, but you do, O oh, lidocaine. So again, the dosing for lidocaine is the use of IV cardiac lidocaine. So that pink picture right there, it's 2% preservative free, 100 mg per 5 mL. And the max that you should stick with is basically 200 mg. Um, for this renal colic and abdominal pain indication, you usually use about 1.5 mg per kilo as a slow IV push over 10 minutes is what we're taught. Um, I've never learned or met anyone that could actually push 10 minutes, so usually the easier way thing to do is to choose your dose of lidocaine and inject it into a 100 milliliter um, bag of saline and let it run in over 10 to 20 minutes. Um, there's pretty good studies on this. One of the studies that started this is the BMC Urology study that looked at 240 patients up to 65 years of age, so just remember that, and that were fairly healthy. They didn't have anyone with renal, hepatic, or cardiac disease, and they used one per 1.5 milligrams per kilo of lidocaine versus morphine. They found that the pain score at five minutes and at 30 minutes were substantially better. Um, there is another study in the American Journal of Emergency Medicine that looked at lidocaine plus morphine or placebo plus morphine. So this didn't eliminate morphine, it just used it as the adjunct. In this study, they found that there is faster time to pain relief with lidocaine and also less time with nausea with lidocaine, which remember, again, this is in fairly young, fairly healthy patients. So keep it in mind, but for people that are either opioid intolerant or for some reason that you don't really want to use too many opioids. So our next ode is for the cough. So, oh, lidocaine, my voice does wane. You may scoff, but only lidocaine can soothe this cough and the throat pain, oh, lidocaine. So this is kind of an interesting way of using lidocaine because it's going to be nebulized. So what you do is you start with 5 milliliters of 4% topical lidocaine, which gets you up to 200 milligrams. You can always go lower to 100 to 200 milligrams. You squirt it into basically what you use for asthma and the albuterol um, and mask, and, um, and you let it run in until it numbs up the vocal cords and helps with laryngospasm that causes cough. Um, remember, there was one case report of nebulized lidocaine toxicity at 300 milligrams, so again, you're sticking to that 100 to 200. Um, there's an excellent study out of Emergency Medicine Journal in 2005 that looked at COPD patients where they used a single nebulized dose of lidocaine and found that there was a decreased severity from 8 to 3 on the cost severity score. The main side effect was a bitter taste and oral pharyngeal numbness, so fairly good and fairly safe. There's another study in an Annals of pharmaco Pharmacotherapy that basically concluded after reviewing 17 studies that nebulized lidocaine is not first-line therapy, but it might provide an alternative option in patients who cannot tolerate or are unresponsive other treatments, and you should monitor just because, again, it is cardiac lidocaine. Finally, our last ode is for headaches. So, oh, lidocaine, what is this pounding in my brain? I can't think, this really stinks. Help me now or I'll go insane, oh, lidocaine. So this is uh, covering the sphenopalatine ganglio block, which is an extracranial parasympathetic ganglion. There's sensory and autonomic fibers in this ganglion. And the reason this works is that there's some thought that blocking this ganglion helps modulate the autonomic symptom that cause headaches. So 
what we're talking about is that circled area right there that is the sphenopalatine ganglion block, and if you'll follow that yellow right over, you'll notice it kind of drops into the back of the nose. So that is our target. So what you do is there's a couple methods. The first method is you take a long Q-tip and you soak it in a local anesthetic, preferably 4% lidocaine. This is a tiny amount of lidocaine, so we don't even get into toxicity with this. You insert it into the nose on the side of the headache and you go until you push a little bit of pressure on the superior border of the middle terminate at the posterior wall. So you're kind of going middle into the back and you just let it sit there for about 10 minutes and check on them about 10 minutes, see if it's, there's any resolution. Usually you should see some resolution within about 30 minutes. Um, the second method, which I think is a little bit easier and it makes your patient look a little bit less cool with the Q-tips coming out of their nose, is um, just using an atomizer. So you can use 2% into an atomizer. You instill about two milliliters into the, um, the nair, so you just squirt it up there and have them sniff. Then you hold pressure by pinching their nose like a nosebleed for about 30 seconds and check on them about 10 to 30 minutes. Usually there should be resolution there and you also can repeat the dose. Um, it is also safe to use it bilaterally if someone's having a headache on both sides. So the studies on this are actually quite interesting. They go over um, some emergency patients, but mostly headache clinics. So one of the first studies was in the 90s in headache, where they looked at 30 male patients with cluster headaches that were given 4% lidocaine intranasally. 20% of them had moderate relief, about 20% had mild relief with very few side effects. And there's multiple studies since then that all cover different types of atomizers, different concentrations of lidocaine, very few side effects, and mostly in cluster and tension headaches. So that's kind of our conclusion here. I wanna say thank you for your time and stop with one final ode. So, oh, lidocaine, you help with so many types of pain. What can't you do? You're my analgesia boo. From head to toe, you fix our ailments like woe. Oh, lidocaine, oh, lidocaine. Thank you guys.